Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today it's time for me to do my May reading wrap up. May was a really good reading month yet yeah, again. I read 15 books in total, covering 10 authors and 4 genres. Um, without further ado, I'm going to start talking about the books because otherwise it's going to be even longer than I know it is going to be. This will probably be 20 minutes before I'm finished, I have a feeling. The first book is Flow My Tears, The Policeman Said. This is by Philip K. Dick and yes, it is one of the yellow uh, spine SF masterwork. Now, as you may have noticed, I've been working my way through Philip K. Dick books in the last few months because I've got lots of them and I haven't read that many of them until now. And now I've read quite a lot more and I'm a bit more knowledgeable on Philip K. Dick. In this Philip K. Dick book, it is yet again science fiction and it is yet again extremely strange and really, really weird, which is Philip K. Dick's tra uh, trademark, essentially. Now, in this one, the main character is a guy called Jason Taverner. He's a very well known and very well liked um, television uh, celebrity. He has his own show. And one day, all records of him on government databases disappear. And his own producer and indeed his own production team suddenly forget who he is. And he's also been accused of murder. So now he doesn't know what to do because he doesn't exist, or does he? He doesn't even know himself because he's now becoming in a very strange place where nobody is aware he he's ever been born, but he knows he has obviously, but because of how adamant the way people are treating him, he's like, well, I've, have I been in some sort of coma for that so many years, or because it doesn't seem like I have, nobody's treating me like I have, but then again, nobody knows who I am. So, it's a very strange um, premise for a book, and indeed it's a very strange book. It's not one of my uh, favourites by um, Philip K. Dick. He has wrote books with similar kind of ideas to this before, uh, and uh, indeed after this was written. This was one of the somewhat earlier ones, well not one of the absolute earliest. And I think it shows because it's got some of the ideas that Philip K. Dick is known for, but it's not written in a all that exciting why it's just kind of strange and a bit weird and frankly doesn't work as well as certain other books might do. It's just one of the cases where it was okay but nothing special frankly but I am glad I read it because it's Philip K. Dick and I want to work on his books. The second book that I read was The Bourne Supremacy by Robert Ludlum. This is the second book in the Bourne trilogy although after Robert Ludlum died after writing the third book. Then the series was continued uh, by another author and indeed they are still being written every so many years. Now I think they've just released the 11th Bourne book. Although I'm not sure how far I will go with the series because I like the books but the books are not like the films which obviously the, they made in the early 2000s starring Matt Damon. I loved the films really badly. I thought they were just extremely well made. The books, they show their age a little bit, although not too much compared to some uh, fillers. And the pacing, though, is what I have issues with in this. Because Jason Bourne is an amnesiac assassin in the first book. He's basically found floating in the ocean. He's been shot. They fish him out of the water. He takes several months to recover. And he then tries to find out who he is. He meets... A certain woman, same woman that is in the film, in the books, she's very different in a very drastic way. He's also very different, and about the only thing it shares with the films really is the fact that the character names and some of the locations are basically the same. The, the actual personalities of the characters involved are almost entirely different, and indeed their roles are drastically different for the most part. So, if you like the film and you're thinking this will be a um, book version of it, yeah, it's not going to be. It was still well written, just nothing that special, frankly. Just, and also, because I was expecting something vaguely some close to the uh, film. I mean, this is the second one, so I kind of knew it wouldn't be that close. I don't know, I think maybe my expectations were a little bit higher than they would have been otherwise. So... You know, it's one of the things where expectations can slightly ruin the book. The third book that I read was New York 
2140 by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a science fiction book and this is about climate change and it features lots of politics and some very interesting ideas. And indeed, this book has been nominated for this year, the 2018 Hugo Award, which I actually will be attending in California, which is frankly closer than I um, am aware. <laughs> and I really did enjoy this book. It's got some extremely interesting ideas. It has Kim Stanley Robinson's usual writing style with some sort of grand concepts explored in a really interesting and thorough way. The characters are varied. It is all about a world where the global warming has indeed gone out of control beyond what we have now and New York has become flooded and is essentially a new type of Venice and indeed the skyscrapers are where everybody is living for the most part because you know the sea level is now much higher and it's all about the residents of one particular building and their struggles in this world because the sea level is uh, different now and the, just the way the world functions is radically different there's no real conflict in the book as such it's more about them just getting to grips with a new world a new and a new world order which I personally like and I will do a separate review of this in the upcoming few weeks though so I'm not going to say too much now than say I really did enjoy this book. The next thing that I read was a ebook, and I'll put a picture up on the screen now and that is Taste of Wrath by Matt Wallace. This is the seventh and final book in the Sinjidura series. This is a seven book uh, novella series. It is urban fantasy and it is all about a catering company with a very particular um, customer. The customer is the US Department of uh, demonic diplomacy essentially and it's as strange as it sounds it's also as mad as you might expect it to be considering it's with demon and chef trying to cook them sort of demo demonic edible food which is really strange at this point the book uh, got a lot darker and I really enjoyed this final book I'm not going to say too much now because I'm going to do a overall series Cinderella overview at some point in the near uh, future probably about three, three weeks away or so so other than that I really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend this series if you want something just fast paced and fun and just easy to get into and very fast to read on top of that then I read Engineering Infinity edited by Jonathan Strahan this is a short story collection by multiple different authors Jonathan Strahan is the editor this is the first in the um, Infinity series. There are, I think there's five of them now, and indeed, this is a finished series, published by Solaris. And I will definitely be getting the other books in the future at some point, because I did thoroughly enjoy this book. It's got a collection of short stories. Some of them are extremely good, some of them are fairly mediocre. That is often the case with short story collections. These are all science fiction based. I can't say too much about this because it's a short story collection and there's too many things to say and this is a wrap up so it might video hold be long but suffice to say I really enjoyed it, it had some interesting ideas um, it had some media stories as I said but an overall though it is well worth reading because this is a good solid collection by some well established authors and indeed some new authors which I really did appreciate overall the next thing that I read was another ebook I'll put a picture up on screen and that is The Flowers of Rashnoi by Lois McMaster Bujold. Now this is a novella set in the same world as her other Vakosigan novels. This is set uh, quite late in the series and this is a fairly sort of sm small offshoot story as such and I, I don't want to say too much about this now because it will spoil plot lines from earlier books. Suppose to say Rachel, known as Cardinali on Book 2, she did a really good review of this, which I will link in the uh, box below. Her video was extremely good, but obviously it would be Rachel after all. And her uh, review of it is also as spoiler free as you can get, considering this is a uh, novella in an ongoing and long running series. You know, so it's, it, it will contain some mild 
spoilers as such, but that's kind of unavoidable. So I say I really enjoyed this novella. It's science fiction, it's fun, fast paced, and the characters are fantastic once again. Boo Joel knows how to do characters well, and she, as far as I'm concerned, she hasn't put a foot wrong yet, which is frankly impressive because when I've read like 20 plus things by now, so you know, it's a very good track record. Then I read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. Now, this book has been very well uh, talked about on Booktube over the last few years, it's become very, very popular. This won the Hugo Award in 2016. The sequel to this won the Hugo last year, and indeed the third book, The Stone Sky, has been nominated for this year's uh, Hugo Award, along with uh, New York 2140. So, this is one that is quite an unusual novel. I mean, if the um, Jemison wins this year's Hugo Award, this will be the first trilogy ever to have all three books winning the Hugo Award, and especially in consecutive years. That's actually, uh, would be a first for any author as well. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about the Hugo Award, let's talk about the book. Um, now I'm going to do a separate review of this, so actually I'm not going to be talking about this very much now, frankly, because, you know, there's no point. Suffice to say, this is a very interesting book where it is both, it's more fantasy than science fiction, but it does have certain science fiction elements within it, because it does have technology, despite being a very, fairly heavily fantasy world. This world is one where earthquakes are prevalent, I mean obviously it's, the series is called The Broken Earth, and there is a certain type of person in this world that can control the earth and can you know, stop earthquakes or can indeed create them. And these people are essentially slaves of the system and of the, the world in general. I ha like the ideas in it, I had issues with the writing and indeed some of the ideas at the time. I think this is more to do with the fact that this deals with slavery and some pretty dark issues. And at the exact moment that I read this in May, I just I don't think I was in the right frame of mind to read about more slavery and more basically horrible abuse of people in positions of power because I've read quite a few books recently where people are just abusing people just because they can. And I don't think I don't think I really should have read it exactly when I did, but you know, it's just one of them things. I am going to be reading the second book in June, and indeed, it, well, I, I'm going to be group reading the second book as well. So, if you want to group read it and talk about it with me, then I'll link where you can do that in the box below. All right, we're getting towards the end now because I have read *Be Better Mouse Trap* by Tom Holt. This is one of the books in the J.W. Wells and Co. series. It is only a very loose series, you don't actually need to have read them in order at all. This starts off with the portable door, which I have um, behind me here, which I have read in the past, which I really enjoyed. This one is like the fifth or sixth in that sequence. Again, it's only sort of vaguely of a sequence as such, so it's not really very um, heavily you know, sequential. You know, you can read these quite independently of each other, although reading maybe the first one, the portable door, would give you some rather interesting and useful context for this because it does feature things that you kind of could do with knowing well it's not essential this is a humorous book it is set in england tom holt from what i can look up he is a londoner from what i can tell however he seems to in almost every book he writes or at least every other book he writes he seems to mention my city the way i live which is birmingham which is unusual because I've never come across an author who mentions my city before. So the fact that he does it in every other book makes me curious about did he have some kind of connection to my city at some point? I can't find that connection looking up online, but I assume it is there somewhere because he does mention it a lot more than you'd imagine otherwise. This is a curious and mad book. The plot um, is frankly insane this is about a um a guy who works uh, essentially a wizard uh, of sorts who has access to a very strange door the portable door you know for, as of the book there and his name is frank carpenter and he works in a strange form of insurance which and i can't really say too much about it because the plot goes all over the place and he's 
basically insane. But suffice to say, this book is fun and enjoyable. It's not quite as amusing as earlier books that I've read by Tom Holt. But it's still a good read and I fully did enjoy it. It just doesn't... I kind of knew what to expect at this point though, so the madness of it was a bit more like, uh, well, yeah, that's mad. It's amusing, but predictable at this point. The penultimate thing that I read was The Black Tides of Heaven by J.Y. Young. This is the first book, well, first novella in the Tenseret series. There are currently two of them out. The third might just have been released. It's just about to be released. It's pretty much any time around right now. And there will be a fourth one, I believe, at the end of this year, start of next year, 2019. And this is a fantasy um, novella. It's classed as silk punk, which is a new sort of subgenre that I think they invented, you know, as they do for certain books. I think this is one of the earlier ones in, in the silk punk um, sort of subgenre, microgenre, whatever you want to call it. This is a really interesting little novella and I'm really glad I read it. The main two characters are Mukoyo and Akia, who are twin children of the sort of protector of this land, you know, this this woman who's very, very powerful position, she controls everything and nobody can really go against her very easily because of the way you know, the system is set up. They were not really wanted very much by her, so they've been sort of shoved aside in favour of other children and such and they've lived this I mean they still lived a um looked at well looked after life but it's not there's not much love in their life and they've been sort of shoved aside and now events are happening and it uh, I don't want to say too much because it is a novella and I'm always worried about saying too much about novellas because obviously they're relatively short so I might give too much away about the plot, especially the plot is, it's not, I want to say simple, but it's quite a short plot, you know, there's only a certain few sequence of events, they're written extremely in depth and extremely thoroughly and with amazing writing, but there are a few of them, so if I take too much, I will spoil things quite badly, I believe, so suffice to say, I really enjoyed this novella, um, I will link a um, review off a fellow booktube of mine, he did a really good review of this previously, I think it was James that did that review, if I remember correctly, so um, I'll link his review because he um, reviewed it and he did, he actually um, gave me these editions, I actually won these off a giveaway he did, so thank you to James as well for this because this was extremely good. And finally, the last thing that I read was not just one book, but it was actually six, and that is the first six books in the Expanse series, yes. Now, <laughs> the books that make up this series are Leviathan Wakes, Caliban's War, Abaddon's Gate, Cibola Burn, Nemesis Games, and finally Babylon's Ashes. Now, the first three books I read for the first time about three years ago and I've decided to reread them because I bought the 4th, 5th and 6th only recently, about, what, four weeks ago now. And so I decided to reread the first three, then I would continue on with these 4th, uh, 5th and 6th books. And indeed, there is planned to be nine books in this series. The 7th book is out, the 8th book will be out this year and the 9th will be next year. However, because the paperback is out a year after the hardback, it will actually be three years before I can actually finish this series. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit of a wait. So, more than likely, once the ninth book is out in paperback and I've bought it along with the seventh and eighth, I will reread these first six again, then read them books, and then I will finally do some kind of big um, overall review of the series because this is a brilliant one. This is obviously the Expanse series, if, if I forgot to say. They have made a television series out of it. It was quite well known recently because this was made by the Sci-Fi Channel. The Sci-Fi Channel decided to axe it for some unknown reason, despite the fact it was like one of the most popular science fiction shows on the planet at the moment. They decided, let's be stupid and axe the thing. And 
thankfully though as far as everybody's concerned it's been picked up by amazon so amazon are now going to be continuing on directly from where the science fiction channel um left off and i'm grateful i haven't watched the television series of it yet but i will do at some future point i just gotta, I just gotta get around to watching it frankly this is a big space opera series it's very expansive and very epic in scope it is based around the crew of the Rocky Canty, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a small ship in the solar system and they basically they will get involved in a whole series of events from the first book they get involved in a certain event and that makes them quite well known and somewhat famous or infamous and from there each book continues this onwards in interesting ways I don't want to say too much other than that because this is an ongoing series and I'm probably all about giving things away, especially when the series isn't complete yet. But I really enjoy this series. It can get a bit overly dark in places, and like I said um, about the fifth season, one of, one or two of the books I might not have been in the right frame of mind to read as I found them a bit overly dark and a bit overly gloomy at that exact moment. But Overall though, I still enjoyed them, um, it's well written, the action and the pacing is extremely good, the characters are fantastic, and you really get involved in wanting the characters like James Holden, who is the main character and the captain of the ship, to do well, and all the other crew, like Naomi and Amos and Alex, you want them to do well and be successful, and for, for the record, probably my favourite character is probably... Amos, because I don't want to say too much about Amos, but he's, a, he's an interesting personality type because he's both excessively violent when he needs to be, but he's also extremely kind and considerate at times as well. So he's an interesting personality type and one that I do enjoy. So, with that said, that is it for everything that I've read in May. This is rather a lot of books. I'm going to put this down before I drop them all over the floor, which I've done before, which is kind of unpleasant. Um, if you've read any of these or would like to, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. If you have any book suggestions I think you think I might like based on any of these, then again, leave a comment as I'm always happy and eager to find new books and new authors. All my social media links, as well as the links to both Rachel's review and everything else will be in the box below as well. And with that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.